Hello everyone. It has certainly been a while since I last posted any videos or given any updates on my projects. So in this video, I will show you what I've been working on and talk about the future of my projects. This video is split into two parts. In the first part, I will talk about the power bank project and the imminent crowdfunding campaign around it. In the second half, I will talk about a completely unique 3D printer I am designing that is unlike any other. Because of my last two power banks project and their success, and many people requested me to create a commercial version. Since then, I have sunk hundreds of hours into creating a commercial version. Now you may ask, don't I already have a functional prototype from the previous video? Well, that may be true, but after testing the power bank around for a month, and since I'm in the design school, I consulted with many of my fellow designers and engineers that I have come to the conclusion that I can improve the power bank design drastically, both in terms of function and aesthetics. Furthermore, since this is going to be my first crowdfunding campaign, I want to be absolutely certain that the design works functionally well, gives a good user experience, and can be easily manufactured. I will go into the specifics about the design later and explain why I have made certain choices. But before that, let's see what this power bank can do. First things are the outputs. In the front, there are two USB Quick Charge 3.0 ports capable of putting out 24 watts each, which is plenty to charge any phone or USB devices at their highest charging rate. The two ports also support legacy 5V charging, so low-powered and older devices are also supported. The two ports right next to the USB ports are what's unique about this power bank. They are both bi-directional ports, meaning that they can serve as both inputs and outputs depending on the situation. This is the USB-C power delivery port, and this power bank supports the highest power protocol, which is 100 watts. This is enough to charge any USB-C devices, like laptops or tablets. And because the charger and the device negotiate between each other, they can automatically switch from discharging mode into charging mode. With a maximum charging power of 60 watts, this is enough to charge the entire power bank within 1 hour and 45 minutes. The next port is the bi-directional DC port, and it can be configured to be either input or output. Just like all my older power bank designs, you can adjust the voltage output on the DC to whatever you like. This means that the power bank can support practically any device that supports DC input. For example, cameras, drones, or laptops. And with a maximum output power of 120 watts, it even supports charging gaming laptops. I usually use this power bank for my soldering iron to do soldering work on the go and the power bank can heat up my iron to 300 degrees within 10 seconds. The power bank also has 10 watts of wireless charging on the top, so you do not have to worry even without a cable. Now, let's go over to the back side, and this is where the speciality of the power bank comes in, and that is its modularity. With a new and improved mechanism, you can reliably attach and detach external modules, and thus expanding the power bank's features to whatever you like. Maybe you would like a more powerful flashlight or a Wi-Fi hotspot module. They can all be easily made and attached to the power bank. Also, the strength of the connection has been greatly improved since the last generation, so the connection is more robust and it is easier to disconnect as well. Next, I am going to talk about the battery and the safety of the power bank. First, this power bank is made up of 5 Samsung 50E cells, which gives this power bank a capacity of 92.5 watt hours. This is close to the legal limit of 100 watt hours that are allowed on an airplane. The microcontroller used in this power bank is the STM32, and it is monitoring a plethora of sensors that focuses on battery temperature, voltage, and current. And if it detects a fault, it will alert the user or shut off the power bank. And for the input and displays, the front power button consists of a ring of RGB LEDs, which indicates the battery charging percentage and the power bank status. The two side buttons are responsible for scrolling and pointing to different menu items, 
and also decreasing and increasing parameters. An aesthetic highlight of this power bank is the display, which is a white 8x32 dot matrix display. And because it spans across the entire width of the power bank, it can be used to point to different ports and indicate whether it is input or output. It can be also used to display a plethora of other information depending on the configuration. Now, that's basically all the features for this power bank. Please tell me what you think about this power bank design down in the comments. Also, I am coming up with a name for this power bank. So if you have any suggestions, please write them down in the comments. That would be greatly appreciated. I am currently doing all the renders and building the campaign video. And hopefully, the campaign will be up within 25 days. With all that said, I am now going to talk about the specific design choices I made and why this design looks so different from the power bank in the previous video. First, I will address the shape of the power bank. And the reason that the shape has changed from rectangle to square is for two reasons. The number one reason is that now the module connection can be made a lot more secure and robust. Furthermore, the shape of the modules now make more sense as it conforms to the shape of the power bank. With that said, I will address why the LED ring has gone from the top of the power bank onto the power button. And the biggest reason for that change is that I discovered that if the LED stays on for too long, it tends to overheat the batteries. The power bank also received a drastic circuitry improvement as well. In the previous version, I have used off-the-shelf converters, which are non-synchronous. This means the efficiency is around 80 to 85%. But now, all the converters inside the power bank are synchronous versions. A long story short, they are around 92 to 96% efficient. This means that a lot more energy can be realistically extracted from the battery and that there doesn't need to be a fan anymore. Instead, the bottom of the electronics is now lined with an aluminum sheet and the heat is conducted to the outside of the IO shield. If you have any questions about this power bank or any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. So stay tuned for the announcement of the crowdfunding campaign very soon. Now, I will talk about my next big project, which is a 3D printer that is truly portable and prints unlike any other printer. Because of my work, I travel around quite a lot around the USA and the world. This is why I wanted a small printer that can fit inside my backpack and requires minimal time to assemble and disassemble. Almost all commercial printers that are foldable are still big and bulky when folded, and I want my printer to weigh less than 2 kilograms. I experimented with many gantry setups, but in the end, I have arrived at this inside-out HBOT configuration that I saw on YouTube. One of the biggest advantage of this design is that the heavy kinematics and all the precision movements are happening on the bottom of the printer. This means that this printer does not need a heavy or sturdy frame to support the gantry. It only needs a sturdy base. I know some of you may be skeptical about printing upside down, and I was too in the beginning. However, there are many videos on YouTube of people trying to 3D print upside down, and the consensus is that there is no significant quality decrease when printing in the upside down orientation. So that should make printing upside down not an issue. Currently, I am designing and prototyping the 3D printer in CAD. If the project is successful, I will release a full video tutorial on it, and I will make this project completely open source. But for now, I just want to share with you guys what I'm working on. If any of you have any suggestions or expertise to offer about this design, you are certainly welcome to comment below. Any suggestion is greatly appreciated. And that is it for now. I am really excited for the crowdfunding campaign, and I would like to thank all of your support and suggestions and I will continually strive to make the best designs and videos and freely share with you guys. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.